Hey YouTube, so now I am finally on to my second video and if you haven't guessed, it's all on Super Mario. If you don't know who I am, my name is Christina McKay. I am what they call a vehicle graphic designer. And about a month ago, I designed something pretty cool for a Mustang and it was all, if you haven't guessed, it was all Super Mario based. Oh yeah, Yoshi. Sorry, I, I totally just bought him for this tutorial, but he's super cute and I'm super excited to be teaching this. And in this tutorial, what you guys are gonna be learning is how to create a really cool metal texture with lots of rivets, and lots of rust, um, and to make it look very realistic so that it's kind of tricking the eye to make, like, to have people think that the car is actually, you know, rusting out, which is super cool. So stay tuned, I'm gonna be showing you guys from the ground up. And yeah, just a shout out to Skeppel. If you don't know him, he's very well known for his rustic wraps. Um, very well known in the industry. So take a look at his work and uh, yeah, let's dive in. Super Mario. Oh yeah. Hey guys, so this is my Super Mario bomber styled wrap, as you can see. Um, so what I'm gonna be teaching you guys in this tutorial, I'll just zoom up here. And I'm gonna close the template so you guys can see. Um, what I'm gonna be teaching it's all this really cool rustic sort of metal. This is at 100% scale, so you can really see the detail. Um, you can see these rivets. Not only that, but you can see like all these like little scratches and everything that I applied into the um, into the metal to give it just. I mean, you don't need to do this, but just to put it over the edge just that little bit more. All the fine little details is what you want, and that's what's going to make a great wrap. So when someone comes to see this wrap up close. They're gonna see all these like little scratches in that, and it just gives it that extra oomph. It gives it that extra little bit of, of I don't know, just that design thing. And the cool thing is, is that these are all high resolution. These are all high resolution. I can't talk. High resolution textures that I'm gonna be teaching you guys on how to create. Um, another thing for this tutorial that I'm going to be teaching you is taking like these little design elements. And applying like this really withered sort of rustic kind of look to them um, and yeah I mean there's a lot of cleanup I still have to do um, I think some of this you know I'm looking like yeah like I gotta clean up this and then just you know clean up make sure that all the colors and that are aligned and you know like you can see where, where I chopped and clipped a certain certain amount of uh, graphics so anyway zooming back out um, what I won't be teaching, a lot of people wanted me to actually draw the girl and stuff like that. Um, I will do that in another tutorial, not for this one, because I think it's just going to be so much information that you guys are going to be like, holy crap, like this is, this is too much. So what I will do in the future, I will do something where I'm, you know, kind of drawing something really cool and coming up with the concept and you guys can, maybe I'll time lapse it and voice over it or something. You guys can watch me actually make the illustrations and I can kind of give you some tips and tricks on how to make your graphics illustrations and that sort of better. So anyway, again, going back to, I've got some reference images here. Yeah. So this was sort of the, the image that I had in mind when I was creating this. Um, you have, you know, you have your really cool pinup girl and then on the side here, I guess like on the bomber planes, like they, they would keep like a number system on how many bombs that the plane would actually drop. So here I have on Mario, like I have like the little, um, uh, the fire flowers <laughs> and like his little life, you know, one up. Um, so I just got these like little elements and then I got the little bomber dude right here. So I don't know. I was just really just playing around and just having fun with it. Um, and that's another thing like I want to tell you guys too, like if you were sitting here with me, like if we were talking one-on-one, -on -one, like if you want to create something that's really cool and unique and different that hasn't been seen in the rap industry, take something that, you know, is being done really well. So in this case, I took, you know, what I've seen, like a lot of the metal rivets and the real rustic sort of textures that I've been seeing being put on wraps. And then I took a theme, which in this case was Mario or Super Mario or whoever you wanted to be. And then I applied the two together and this is what I feel made the rap so successful and why people, you know, like this got mad outreach. Like this was crazy. I think this is, if it's not the best one I've done, it's probably close to just for the, the concept alone. Like people were really digging it. So if you guys really wanna be an artist, if you guys wanna be a designer, if you really wanna start being known for what you're doing, 
That's just a trick I always have is just take one concept and then apply a theme to it because people love themes. I'm telling you, like anything like I, I got a Godzilla theme coming out now. Um, I'm doing another Venom one. I mean, people come to me for themes all the time. So that's pretty cool. As long as you're, you know, you're not copying from the web and you're stealing stuff from the internet and you're making it your own. Like there is rules to this. Like I'll just say really quickly, um, you know, Venom, it's just for the hell of it. Like if I go to images, and like this dude here, which I see all the time, like people, you know, will steal this image, plaster it on the car, cut around it, and voila, it's it's a car wrap. I can't, I hate that stuff. Please don't do that stuff. Um, if you are going to take an image like that, please manipulate it. Please do something to it to make it your own. Um, that's just me as a designer. Um, I mean, someone worked really hard on this, like doing this. So taking work, like, ex like, Taking work that is absolutely someone else's and then just throwing it on the car and saying it's your own, it's just, it's, it's, please, please don't. Um, it's just not good. Um, so after having said that, um, like, I mean, I see people take images too, manipulate them in a way that's really cool on the wrap. So as long as the image is being manipulated and that you're making it your own, awesome. I love wraps like that as well. So, okay. So that's Venom. We will talk about him another time in another video. Uh, right now we are concentrating on get away Venom. Go. Okay. Um, our bomber wrap here. Okay. So let's get on with the first lesson. Um, I think the first lesson what I will be teaching you guys is actually how to look for these sort of textures. And I'm going to give you guys some really it's a big secret of mine that, you know, you guys are hopefully going to thank me for in the end. Um, I've had people tell me not to share this kind of stuff um, because it's just like it's a top secret designer stuff. And I just I think I think it's ridiculous. And I, I do think that everyone should know um, just so that the wraps are looking better and that when people like if I know that there's a designer out there and he's creating something that looks like paint and people on the street are thinking, oh my God, like that's an awesome vehicle wrap instead of something, well, that looks really cheesy and that looks super dumb and you know, that doesn't look really real. Um, you know, like if, if I'm a, if I know some tips and tricks on how to make that image a little bit better and how to um, make that like more of a higher res scale, I'm gonna show you guys because we need better wraps out there. So here we go, lesson number one. Okay, so if you guys have come this far onto lesson one, you've watched me do my whole entire intro and skit and everything like that. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in this far. And as a reward, I want to reward you guys. I am going to give you a secret. And this is something I've never shared with any rap shop. Um, I haven't shared it with anybody. And I think the only reason why I want to share it on this channel is because I can. And... Again, I just want to see some really cool vehicle wraps out there. And the people that tell me, like, don't do these videos, this trick, this, this tip is for you guys too, because you guys are going to thank me in the end for doing stuff like this. So here we go. So my biggest secret, before I give you that, one other thing, I need to tell you guys how, before I even got involved in the vehicle wrap industry, I started off... I was doing a lot of 3D design work. So I was I was modeling cars, I was doing animation, I was I was doing all that like really cool stuff, like stuff that you would see like in, in Disney movies and Pixar and stuff like that. So I kind of had a background in that. I ne I didn't necessarily have any knowledge on on design, like uh, advertising, things like that. It wasn't until I got into the vehicle rap industry that I started learning more along like the, the psychology of design and then, and, 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 oh my gosh, I'm stuttering. I'm just, I'm just so excited about this because I know this is going to be a game changer for you guys. So the secret is a lot of the textures that I use, not to give like Shutterstock, like I love Shutterstock. I'm not dissing Shutterstock by any means, but I'm just going to like go here really quickly. Um, Shutterstock, uh, 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 rest textures, I guess. I don't know. 
I'm just gonna show you sort of what I mean. So let's just take this image, for example. Eh, it's not really probably the best image. Let's take this image, for example. Uh -huh. And larger, thank you, computer's really slow. So when you look at this image, you probably really think it's cool. It's very high res, um, especially when you download it. Um, but I can tell, like I can tell you guys, this image is very, very flat. And when I see this kind of stuff on cars, I just know that I can do a little bit better. And this is why. Um, there's a website that you guys can go to. Um, there's plenty of 3D texture websites out there. This is just my favorite one. I'm pretty sure it's called Polygon. Yeah, so there it is. So it's P-O-L-I-I-G-O-N. And they do a lot of 3D rendering, a lot of 3D textures. So you can kind of see in their background here, none of this is real. This is all applied texture. So you can really see the wood grains, things like that. Um, so if I just click up here, if I go to textures, you can see like, like how realistic this looks. I know this is like a watermelon, but it's just insane the stuff that these guys can do. Okay, so just going back going back thank you um, so here they have like a like a grunge like they have so many textures like it's just it's insane the amount of textures these guys have um, like if you're looking for like a patina look like this stuff's insane um, I'm gonna go to my assets one second here so count I'm just going to show you what I bought for the Super Mario wrap. And my internet's really slow. I don't know why. Account. Click. Thank you. My assets. Thank you. So when you look at this, like you can see the depth, the cracks. Like this thing looks, it's just, ah, it's so mind, like, it's so realistic to me. Where something like this is, meh compared to something like this. This is like, oh yeah, like this is real. So this is what I'm gonna be teaching you guys. So, you know, keep tuning into this tutorial because if you guys can start producing wraps like this, we are going to change the whole industry. It's going to be like, you know, people, yeah, just I'm, my goal is to make better designers and let's just do it. So all you haters, you can hate because I'm gonna make better designers. So, okay, let's go. So let's just say, these are the two textures I used for the Super Mario. So it was this one, it's called Rust Mix on Paint 008. You guys can find that if you want. And then the second texture I used for the Super Mario one was the Car Swirls. Um, this is the one where all the like, little nitty scratches and that that you can see on the paint um, that was actually multiplied on top of this guy. So once you download those two textures, um, I'm not sure, I have a subscription with these guys. So I'm pretty sure that you can um, buy them separately. I don't think you need to have a description or description, subscription. Um, some of the textures too, they also offer for free. So, um, and the other cool thing is, is that you can download these at extremely high resolution. Like you can see here, 6144 by 6144, that's insane. I think this one, it's like even like, yeah, you're like 8,000 for pixels. Like <laughs> that's insane. Like that Shutterstock could never do something like that. But anyhow, so once you download those two textures, I have them downloaded here. I'm just going to open them up. So car swirls, I downloaded the 6K. I'll just copy all these and throw them in. I'll kind of explain which each one is so that it's all 3D terminology, but I'll just kind of give you the the generics, like, gist, I guess, on what they are. So this one's called a normal map um, in 3D. Normal maps are basically applied to 3D models to really give that in-depth. So, like, if you look at Thanos from, like, Avengers, like, he, he's got that chin, he's got that whole beard thing going on, and he's got, like, the little indents. So all that is what they call normal maps. They actually apply that and it gives it that, that in-depth look. But for this, we're just using it for a car wrap, so we don't need to get that, you know, intuitive with it. So, and this is just your reflective map and this is your gloss. 
So this is like your normal standard picture shot. So we're just going to apply um, our normal map on top of that. We'll just set it to multiply and we'll just make it um, black and white. Actually, I don't want to multiply. Let's do darker because you can't really... Is it darker? No, color burn. Yeah, that's better. So now you can really see all the, the little scratches and, and stuff. Um, and then you're going to take your gloss layer and then you just apply that on top. And I think, I think this is multiply. Yeah. So you kind of see if I'm like turning this on and off, on and off. It, not much of a difference, but it just gives it that little extra indent, like into the, the scratches. So it just looks more real, like it's an actual scratch. So yeah, <laughs> I think it's, I, I love 3D. Like 3D, that's where it's at. Okay, so just save this out as a texture, just save it as car, scratch, texture, whatever. Um, and then for this guy, the rust, I mean, you can download any type of rust thing. They had hundreds of them there. I'm just using this guy, for example. Uh, so these guys have a little bit different layers. Um, I'll just take my normal map. These are just different color variations. Um, and I'll take my reflective. And this is just a gloss again. So I'll just take those four. Go into Photoshop. Bring them in. Let them upload. Do, 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 do. Oh, look at that normal map. Like, I, I gotta, I gotta bring this back. Like, that's insane. Look at the depth in that. Anyhow, okay. I'm gonna stop being a nerd. Okay, so this is my main layer here, so I'll just take my normal map, copy it all, and then throw it on top. And then color burn, pretty sure black and white, just for that layer. I don't know if I want to do color burn. Sometimes you can just play around with these and just look what looks best to you. I just, I still want that, that depth, so I don't want because like color burn right now, I feel it's kind of taken away from it just a little bit. Let me just see. Ooh, look at the depth on that. All right, I like vivid light. Let's go with that one. And then this is this. This is reflective, so we can probably maybe a soft light. Mm. Yeah, I like soft light, a screen like. Yeah. Let's go soft light. Not much of a change, but it just gives it a little bit more contrast. Let's keep that. And then I think I had one more open, didn't I? I mean, you don't need to use all of these. Again, it's just about having fun and playing around with them. But I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna use this one. Maybe lighten? No, that does nothing. Screen, screen. Just. So when you really scale in, it's just like, sorry, my computer hates me right now. So I'm just giving it a little bit of highlights inside the rest here. So again, let's just save that and we'll save it as our uh, rust paint. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So that's another texture. Okay, so then what we're going to do, so let's just merge all these, flatten. Then we go to Mario. So let's just say I didn't have a design on it. It's just a, a gray car, I guess. <laughs> and I'll just bring these textures over. Oops, what did I do? Select all, copy all, throw it in. There we go. Select all, copy all, throw it in. Okay. Did it paste in? didn't. Why didn't you paste? Copy, paste. There we go. So this car right now is to scale. I'm just going to assume you know how to do that. <laughs> um, so when you scale in at 100%, you can see the texture up close. So I'll just set this to multiply.
And so that's really how I started off. Um, what I did do, oops. So that's really how I started off. Um, and then really it's just about filling the rest of the car. So you can duplicate these layers and then bring her over. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, with these textures from Polygon, they're seamless. And what I mean by seamless is that if you're going to keep duplicating these over and over again, they're going to match, right? Like, that is such a time saver. Like, you don't need to, like, you know, content aware and match this and use your clone tool and all that crap. Like, it's all done for you. So I love Polygon. Like, those guys are amazing. They totally get what's up. So this is a seamless design. I mean, I know a lot of people right now as designers call this done, send it off to the print shop, send it off to the client, and you could very well do it. I mean, it's quick, easy money. You're done. But me, I'm a perfectionist. I like doing things outside the box, and I like doing stuff that, you know, calls uh, attention to people, not just a normal rustic wrap. Okay, so here we go. So let's just say we're happy with that. La la la. I mean, let's just, I'm just gonna keep these two here. I'm gonna need them. This was my rust layer, and then this was my uh, paint scratch layer. And then close these, and then I'll merge all the rest of these so that it's just one layer. But at least I have the two main layers. Like, always keep your originals, no matter what. Um, because if you're going to start designing the back and the front and the hoods and stuff, these two layers instead of the merge layers could definitely come in handy. All right, so the next thing, so we got the rust, which is cool. Now the next thing is doing the really cool metal plates and the rivets and all that stuff. And I got that from Shutterstock. Um, so give me a second. I'm just going to log into my account and I'll bring it up. One sec. Okay, so this was the one that I bought on Shutterstock. Um, you can kind of see here. It's just airplanes, <laughs> really. Um, but I think this is what I typed in. I think I typed in something like, um, you can kind of see, yeah, metal plates with bolts. And then I changed it to photos. And then it took a little bit of researching. Um, like, I mean, this is pretty cool. Um, like you see a lot of stuff like this, but again, I don't know, it just, it's too flat for me. Looks too cartoony, like it, oh, that looks real. But what did I just have up? This one, yeah, like this looks a little too cartoony. Like it doesn't look real at all. And I like real, like the more uh, 3D sort of effect you can get, the better. Um, so, I mean, these are all real textures of aircraft, um, but to take this image and then try to, f and then trying to figure out how to like replicate the sides and all that, um, you can probably purchase other images to try to um, fill it all in. But I mean, Shutterstock's pretty expensive, so I try to try to find that one image that I can just use the one time and then try to manipulate that and and. Um, what, what am I trying to say? And just try to reuse it over and over again um, so that it's easy. This is pretty cool. And you know, I'm not gonna bore you guys looking for textures. You know Shutterstock has a shitload of them. Um, but I'm pretty sure what I typed in was metal plates with bolts. And then when you scale down, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's what I found. And I thought it was awesome because I can definitely take this and replicate the textures over and over again. Um, so that it's metal plated, that the car is actually metal plated. Um, if you don't have Shutterstock as a, you know, because I mean Shutterstock is pretty expensive. If you were just to go to Google, go to images, and then type in uh, metal texture default. Uh, go to your tools, size, and then you want to look for really high quality images. You can kind of go through here. Um, sometimes, you know, you might get lucky, um, but it's all about research. And 
I said about, I mean, I'm from Canada, so I do say about. Um, I'll try not to say it as much, but about. Um, this is pretty cool. Sorry, sometimes when I'm not looking for stuff and things just kind of pop up, um, I actually save it because it's like, oh yeah, you know, I might use this later on down the road. Um, so yeah, um, but if you're a designer, you should definitely have stock photos, um, whether it's deposit photos, um, you know, there's a hundred of stock photo websites that you can go to to grab your textures. But for this particular one, I found it on Shutterstock. See if you can find an image similar to this. Um, and just something that you know that you can repeat over and over and over again. It's not going to cause you um, any hassle. So let's just download this. Download for free. Okay, so once you have that image, you're just going to copy it. Select all, copy. And then paste. So I really wanted these um, rivets and the plates to really align with the vehicle. So I just kind of look for something that's kind of straight on the car, how the body lines are going, kind of line it up with that. Um, I think I scaled it in a little bit too. I can't quite remember because it's been a while since I designed it. But, you know, just do something like that and then duplicate. Another thing I used to do, like when I first started off as a designer, um, I used to like work at this sort of scale. I never really zoomed in much. Um, so what would happen, I would think like from afar that this would be matching, but then when I actually zoomed in, you could see like, yeah, that's not matching at all. So another form of habit that you guys should be doing is always zooming in as close as you can, always at 100% for me. So I'm just going to flip this image around because you can kind of see that there's different contrasts with the two. So I'm just going to go edit, transform, flip horizontally. There we go. So now it's kind of color matching a little bit better. Um, so these rivets here, they're not matching very well. So what I'll do, I'll just kind of scale it in. So this is my original layer. Again, always save in your original. I'll just duplicate that, close it. And I'll merge these two layers. And then what I'll do, this is where my content aware comes in. So for me, it's Shift F5. But again, if you guys don't know what it is or where it is, um, pretty sure it's just, yeah, edit, fill, and then your contents, and then content aware. I'm just click, yeah. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just keep doing it until it does work. There you go. Oops. There you go. And then, you know, if you want another rivet or something, just use your clone tool. Sorry, I'll scale that in a little bit. It's a bit big. There you go. Cool. Maybe like a couple more. Here. Here. Whatever. Okay, cool. And then, again, just fill the whole entire vehicle. Um, another thing I noticed, the door handle here, my rivets are going in there. I don't like that, so I'm just going to see if I can move her up a bit so that it's just a great door handle. And that's another thing you guys should be looking for design too. Um, if it's landing on the door handles, things like that, because your installer is going to kill you if he has to match that crap. So don't do that. Um, okay, so now we just got to do the back end. I'll just go copy her on. So I'm out. I'm just going to zoom back in. Again, you got those rivets here. So I'll just merge these two. I'll fix these guys. Content to wear. Go away. Content to wear. And that's my clone tool. And then just a couple more here, yeah. Sorry, I'm zoomed in too close. I'm even, I'm at like 200%, so I'm <laughs> just gonna like clean this up a little bit. There you go, and then just clone these rivets. Here and then here, whatever. 
And then there's a little bit at the top that we need to do. So again, you can just go copy, paste, cure up. And I don't know, might edit, transform, flip vertically. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's a bit better. Okay, cool. So now when you actually close your template layer, it's pretty much all filled in um, besides the bottom. But I mean, you can pretty much just copy that layer, turn off your template, throw it down. There you go. Something weird and wacky going on here. I don't know what it is. So again, just merge all these layers. And if you want, just like content aware of that crap. There you go. Beautiful. 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 I mean, I don't think we're going to actually print this stuff, but you never know. So you might as well just get rid of it instead of going back and doing the work later. Okay, so she's all filled in and she's all high res. So now that our car has rivets, um, sorry, this is just, I'm just going to fill in the tops here white because it's distracting me. Okay, cool, cool. So we're going to go back to, let's just throw these down. And then this layer here, I wonder what it looks like multiplied. Looks pretty, pretty cool. I just, for me, I didn't really like how the rust looked rust. Um, so I really just changed the, the color. Um, I think I used hue and saturation. I think I gave it more of a blue. Blue? More saturation. Something like that. And again, like... Things like this door handle. Didn't really like how the artwork was overlaying it, so I'll just content aware. So that it's a little bit more of a one color instead of all that texture. Um, another thing you can do too, like having bumpers in that match is pretty much um, impossible. <laughs> so you might just want to go in and just clean up things so that, you know, the bumper doesn't, if it doesn't match, it's not going to look too awful. So yeah, sort of the same thing here, but I mean, looks pretty good. Uh, it's got some green in it, I think. Um, so let's just play around with selective color, maybe. Is that green? There's no green. Blues. Yeah. Play the blue channel. And maybe like master control. Yeah, that should be good. So let me just um, create the layer. And so that's pretty much how I started um, doing this whole Mario theme. And then it was just really adding the graphics and then um, really making that weathered and, and grunge sort of look to them. So let's go on to the next lesson. I will cut this. I will say this is lesson one. It's a pretty long lesson, but if you guys are still tuning in, thank you. And um, yeah, let's just go into lesson number two. Alrighty, so lesson number two, let's go. Okay, <laughs> that's what Mario says. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, I'm just, it's the hat. It's gotta be the hat, guys, I'm sorry. I had to wear the hat. Yoshi's in the background there watching me do these tutorials, so, you know, enjoy. Okay, so here we have the thing that I just showed you guys in the tutorial how to create, and then I have the original design of what I actually did. Uh, I just want to see the comparison. Mine's a little bit more, I think it's got a little bit more greenish hue. I mean, there's no way I'm going to match that exactly. I can try, though. Okay, um... So let me just see here 
how am I gonna do this? Uh, I'll just merge this group, or wait, copy it first before merging. Merge. And then I'll just kind of scale this up out of the way, maybe. Wait, 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 wait. Here, I'm just gonna take this section here. Copy, paste. And that way I can kind of move it up and see if I can match the coloration a little bit more. So let's just go hue and then saturation. Make sure that you've got this little, your clip mask click to it onto your layer. So let me just zoom in. Make sure I got the color right. Yeah, about, it's about that. Maybe a little bit more saturation. Meh. Close enough. Then what I'll do, I'll delete all the merge groups here, and then I'll apply this new hue saturation, create clipping mask onto my group here. So there we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you guys, if I can scroll in, is how to create like this really cool weather sort of look. Um, so here I have bombs away, and then I got the, the little, um, I don't even know what this guy is called. Um, I guess he's a, he's a plant. <laughs> I know he has a name, I can't remember though at the top of my head. So for this, I'm gonna show you guys how to create the bombs away. Um, and then we're gonna apply like the really cool um, weathered effect on top of it. Um, one other thing I wanna show you guys. So you'll see here I have like these metal plates and when I close this, you'll see that I have an extra little metal plate. Um, I basically just went into Google, I typed in, um, I think it was like boats and rivets or bolts or whatever it is and I just copied this and I multiplied it on top just to give it something a little extra. Um, same thing with the bullet holes. I found some images of bullet holes on Google and again I just multiplied it on top and uh, just to give the wrap just some extra details. Um, here you know, let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, close you and I don't have it I actually closed it I think. Let's see if I can go to Mario here. Mario, no. Um, pictures. Curvaceous um, wraps. I think it was my Instagram actually. Instagram post, bring her down. And yeah, so this one here. Um, so you can kind of see. Maybe it's not so much on this one. Yeah, it kind of, it shows you like the, the pilots, uh, the names of the pilots. Um, what was the other image that I had? I think it showed a little bit more clearly. Yeah, not so much. But anyhow, on a lot of these warplanes, going back to my point, um, they had the name of the pilot, um, where they were traveling, and uh, or where the, the, the home base was military and like the crew and what year and blah, 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 blah. So I thought that was a cute little neat touch that I could definitely add, uh, add in the driver, you know, Mamma Mia Mario or whatever and Super Mario Land and all that cool stuff. My mushroom's out of place here. I don't know. I must have moved it by mistake. So let's just see. Uh, Mr. Mushroom, where did you go? There it is. Okay. So let's proof here. This guy was just meant to be sort of like um, underneath the, the vinyl, like an emboss effect. So I was just trying to do that. I, I did have the textures on there. I don't know why he's shaded in black right now, but um, if I were to bring back my Instagram posts, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you can kind of see how he's a little bit embossed in there. So it's just, you know, again, any little tiny touches that you can think of adding that can make the wrap a conversation piece. Because a lot of people don't know about this stuff or that you don't even look for this stuff. So if it is your, just say that you were the client and this was your car. Um, 
when people come up to talk to you about the car, you can show them this sort of thing and it becomes a conversation piece. So I think clients really appreciate um, you know, the afterthought um, on, on the little details that you can add because more often than not, the client's not gonna think of stuff like this. It's gonna be up to you as a designer. So again, just a couple of other little tricks. Um, all right, so enough about that. Let's get into how we can create the scrunch effect on our text or on our graphics or whatever it is that we wanna do. So, okay, so let's just close this layer here. Um, and let's just go back to original, what we were working on. And then let's just get our text tool. And I will just, I already got the text here. Uh, the text I was using is called, I think it's called Bat Yoshi, <laughs> which is absolutely perfect for this tutorial. Um, it's funny how when you don't think of things like this and they just pan out, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so bombs, I will scale that bigger. Uh, let's just say that's a good size. And then we'll just duplicate it. And then we'll go the words away. The exclamation point. And I believe, I think I had it white with like a dark blue stroke. I think, let me just see what I had. No, it's actually, I had it dark blue with a white stroke. Okay. So let's just add, let's just, I don't know, just for the sake of it, color, dark blue, navy blue. Mm. More rich than that. There we go. Something like that with a white stroke. Make sure that's on the outside. Okay, that's cool. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna style, new style, type in bomber style, I guess, I don't know. Okay, and then apply the same thing to the words away. Styles, enter, there we go. And then, Try to rearrange it a little bit so that you can read it. <laughs> and then what I think I did, I just took those two layers and then I merged them. Or rasterize first, and then merge layers. Again, you always have your original in case you need to go back and edit. Um, and then what I did, I just kind of transformed it. I used a warped, a warped thing, I think, just to give it some I don't know, like an arc or something cool. All right, so let's just say that's beautiful. We got the really cool arc that we want. And now the fun stuff. So again, you can probably duplicate that layer just so that you have that edit layer that you just did. And then what you're gonna do, you need to go brushes. Brushes, What I, I was just thinking ahead. Um, you need to actually download brushes. Um, you can download a bunch of brushes on the internet and Google. Um, so let's just do that for the sake of doing this, I guess. Um, let's just go grunge brushes. Um, sometimes I go to images. And the thing is, not every brush you download is gonna be high res. So sometimes I might just type in the word vector. And maybe sometime the word free. <laughs> sometimes you gotta pay for that stuff. Um, I don't know, let's just, let's just try something. Why am I being picky here? This is just a fun tutorial. Honestly, I will show you the brushes that I used, but I just downloaded the new version of Photoshop and I just lost all my brushes, all my brushes on the other machine, so I gotta transfer them. So this is why I'm kinda doing this step. It's like, oh crap, I just lost all my brushes. But I will transfer them and then I will tell you guys what brushes I used. Um, it's looking for vector images, so I'm just going to go brushes, Photoshop, free. 
I mean, any brush is going to do, as long as it's high res. Let's try this brush. It looks kind of cool. Downloadable start in three, two, one, zero. Aha. Okay. And then this is what I usually do because I usually have so many brushes. I just create a new folder on my desktop. New folder and I call these Photoshop brushes. I mean, feel free to skip ahead if you guys know how to download brushes and all that stuff. But this is for the people who don't know. Um, so I just downloaded that. Just throw it in there. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to go to your erasers because you're going to be erasing this or parts of it anyway. So you're just going to do your erasers. Um, we're going to go up top. You're going to select this gear um, icon and you're going to go import brushes and you're going to go to where you saved your brushes. So for me, it was my desktop, Photoshop brushes, grunge, load. Okay, cool. So then you have them all here. And again, it's just about playing around, um, having fun, see what works, what doesn't. Um, you know, changing the different sizes. That's why you want to have multiple copies of this because, again, what you might do, you might not like, you might want to go back. Um, and, like, the opacity, too, you might want to change. It's really up to you. Um, but first starting off, I always start off at 100 just to see what the brush looks like. So that, for me, is a bit much. But, you know, you can just kind of do, like, the outer edges. I do like this brush setting though. Maybe you don't like it, just go back. So it just makes the graphic look like the paint is chipping away, which is uh, pretty cool. But don't do it so much that you can't actually read it. So let's just try a different brush for fun. This one's a little bit more subtle. So again, just changing the sizes and just trying to get the inners. I really do like this brush set. Like, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, sometimes that's enough. Sometimes you want just little subtle things, but, you know, sometimes you have clients that they want it really harsh and noticeable. So just keep playing with it. Again, as long as it's, you know, legible, I'm happy. Um, I like getting in that Y. I like... Let me see. Oop. Just really want like a lot of the Y gone. I don't know why, but <laughs> sorry guys. The letter Y. There we go. Um, I like the harshness of this brush. It's just the um, the sharpness of it is what I liked. Okay, so once you're happy with this, um, it looks good to you. Let's just say this is perfect. Um, a lot of designers will leave it there, but for me, I always want to go the extra mile. So what I really want, I want these little rivets. I want these little bolts to actually be showing through my decal, um, the, the bombs away. So I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. Um, so I'm going to look for that steel layer that we used. Um, I'll select around the text. I'll hide that layer hide my template and then this was my uh, steel text that we added so I'll just go copy and then bring up my text again and then I'll go paste and I want to make this a black and white layer so I'll just go image adjustments black and white okay looks good and then I'll add a clipping mask create a clipping mask and then I'll go multiply. And then there you go. Um, you have the rivets overlaying on top. So it just makes it, you know, it's not on top of the layers, it's now a part of the layers. So it really makes that, that look really real. So 
again, it's about going the extra little steps to make this really come to life and make it as real as possible. So um, again, just 100%. Sorry, my computer hates me, it's my keyboard right now, so I won't click it too much because we're at the end of this tutorial. But this is what you would have printed. This is at 100% scale, so this is exactly what the printer is going to be printing when you send it off to print. Um, I'm going to be making a ton of tutorials on on setting up your paneling, on your prints, how to set it up for the printer, things like that. Um, but yeah, this is this is it. This is you know you're not going to get any higher res than this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you know you learned a lot of things. Um, I know initially, like when I was first starting out, if someone told me these tips and tricks, I I would be so thankful and. I mean, yes, I've been in this industry for about five years and it took me a long time um, to learn a lot of this stuff of what I'm teaching you guys and just, you know, maybe a 20, 30 minute video, but uh, hopefully you got this far. And if you did, please leave a comment, please subscribe. And yeah, maybe if you're not a vehicle wrap artist and you just want to learn better design tips, things like that with Photoshop, well then here it is. All right, guys, I hope that you have a great week. And I know Christmas is just around the corner. And again, thanks so much for tuning in and give me your ideas. I want your ideas, so send them my way. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, guys, so that is it for this tutorial. I hope that you had fun. I hope that you learned a lot. Uh, just as a recap, what we did, we actually took the metal textures and we found them to be like really high res so that when we put it on the vehicle, that it's not all pixelated and stuff when people are actually viewing the car in real life. And that, you know, can actually fool people into thinking that the car is being rustic. So again, I've never seen any tutorials out there like this. So if you guys have any ideas, I want to know. I want to know what your guys' ideas are. If you have different themes that you want me to do, um, I'm all for it. So leave it in the comments. And again, big, big thing, subscribe. Please subscribe. Um, I'm already past 100 subscribers and it's all thanks to you guys. I am so, I'm so over the moon with this and I just keep wanting, I keep wanting to do all this content for you. So uh, thanks guys and uh, I will catch you in the next video. <laughs> okay, see ya, bye.